All right, everybody. Well, thanks for hanging in with us. Uh, we appreciate your attention and uh, all the exciting discussion that's going on. Uh, I know I've learned a lot and I've been really inspired by some of the speakers like, oh yeah, we should do something like that. Oh no, we should do, yeah, that would be a good idea too. So um, really happy to be here. Uh, my name is Clint Nottie Ford. I am the instructional designer at Web Courseworks. And um, my role is really uh, in the cases where either you don't have an instructional design team or you want to augment your instructional design, you have something new that you want to try out. Um, contact us. Uh, we'll work something out, try to make something a little flashier, a little more uh, interactive has been a key word. We had a uh, workshop this morning about interactivity and um, using Storyline and other tools, mostly Storyline for that case, but we use lots of different tools. Uh, and one of the tools that I'd like to talk about here are our native authoring tools within Course Stage LMS uh, in the Carnegie uh, edition, uh, and also some that are in Broadway as well. So here are the set of tools that I'd like to talk about. We have the H5P tools, which you will see as interactive content is how they show up in course stage. Um, under the surface, that is H5P. Um, and two of my favorite activities are flashcards and interactive videos, which Elizabeth talked a little bit about this morning in our workshop. Um, also, in addition to that, we have our classic quiz module with a few new quiz question types in Carnegie, as well as a, a throwback that I think is really worth uh, maybe reinspecting if you're not using it already or using it to its full potential, uh, randomizing questions. So interactive content, our H5P, and our flashcards. Flashcards um, and interactive video fall under, for me, the desirable difficulty uh, term that I used this morning. And desirable difficulty is giving learners that little bit of stretch beyond what they think they can do right now. That it's not just read this paper, find the answers in your multiple choice question and circle that one, but rather give it a little bit more. Uh, rather than just watch the webinar, throw in those multiple choice questions, um, something maybe with a case study uh, involved in the multiple choice question that really applies the content. What I like about the flashcards is that we, and the interactive video as you'll see, we have this, uh, we have our, there we go. Uh, this is what you see. This is all of inside of the LMS. This is our North American Association of Food Equipment Manufacturers. Uh, really great people that I got to work with last year and the beginning of this year uh, who helped uh, collaborate with us to create this course for them. And one of the things, <coughs> is that we had these list of terms that their users had to know for an accreditation uh, examination. And we took those terms and we broke them down by chapter and we were able to just take our, um, the content we'd agreed upon, usually between word, uh, word files, and plug them into these fields. We have what was the term, what was its definition, and what was the, the matching term. We could do all of that, and H5P is, comes pre-styled and pre-programmed. So you plug in your question as you agreed upon it with your SMEs, and here's what it comes up with. A really nice interactive environment where you can uh, click along to get to the next interactive flash flashcard. Um, you've got excellent graphics. All of this is formatted 
very cleanly. Um, so it's right out of the box, uh, a nice interaction that gives you that desirable difficulty to really engage users. Along with the pre-styling, we get pre-programming that you don't have to worry about how to come up with the check mark or the X uh, or how to come up with the feedback for what is the correct answer. Um, that's all done for you. You just put in your question, your answer. You can also throw in some tips that come up. Say, hey, maybe you should think about uh, the MIC griddle. No, no, plug, no plug there for any restaurants. Um, and it'll automatically put those in there for you. So I thought that was a really nice interaction that, um, that we could use. Um, it can also be um, very productive. Uh, it's not just a multiple choice that you actually have to spell out what you're thinking, that it's um, not just identifying, but really retrieving in your mind uh, the, the concept that was brought forth in the education. So here's the interactive video, a very similar uh, feel to it uh, there that we have pre-styled and pre-programmed uh, interactions. Uh, and it works with the existing video. You don't have to create a new video necessarily. You can upload one. I think they even have a feature if you have something on YouTube right now, uh, you can pull it in from YouTube and start adding uh, interactions in the way you would like to see them. So, yeah. was there a question? Sorry. Okay, you can pull them in from Vimeo. Yeah. So YouTube, Vimeo. Uh, we'll also pull them in. That way you can get some things off of your servers and over to Vimeo. No, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my favorite, uh, I know our, our friend Amanda back at the office. Hi, Amanda. Uh, this is one of her favorite words. Uh, WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. Um, you'll notice the difference between the product that the user sees and the interface for what you are creating are almost exactly the same. So you get already a preview as you're creating it. You'll notice up here different uh, styles of interactions, the multiple choice, uh, the pick manys, true false, some matching, and even some other uh, options here. So that you don't just have to do one style of question on your video, but at the 10 mar minute mark, you can have a true false. The 20 minute mark, you can have a multiple choice. 30 minute mark, matching, so that your users are staying alert uh, and that you're mixing it up for them uh, and mixing it up for yourself. So I uh, highly recommend those two tools. A look over, yeah, please. Remind me, can those questions be graded and go towards a final grade? or is the interaction just that, just an interaction, and then the test questions have to be asked again? I would have to uh, double check on that. I, I do know they, the answers should be reported back to the LMS. I have, for this, they, we didn't do a graded version for NAFM, um, so they're just out there and what they get is what they get. Um, so I would, uh, I'd like to look into that with you. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other questions about these two products before I move on? I will say, just to add to, I have used the H5P. I've played around with it a little bit. And it is a really neat, interesting um, content tool that you have, the offering tool. Mm -hmm. Great. So Elizabeth has expressed some Sorry. like for the uh, for this tool. So, And I didn't mention the last question was about whether you could have these question points feed into, for example, the grade book on the LMS. I believe they do. I don't want to overpromise because I haven't <laughs> personally done one in production that leads to a grade graded um, result. All right, 
So the quiz module, which I know flows into the grade book, um, we have a new, a uh, couple new question types with uh, this release of Carnegie. Um, and that added some drag and drop question types, as well as um, selecting some missing words. And um, also going back to the random questions. When you bring up the uh, adding a question type, we have here our three new ones, different drag and drops, as well as a selecting missing word. So here's an example of an interaction I built also for NAFM. Uh, this is uh, turning one of their diagrams in a, a manual into an interaction so that they didn't just read the diagram and say, okay, that makes sense to me, but I will take away key parts of that diagram. Okay, what do you remember? How do these two groups interact with each other? Um, so that's all in the LMS, in the quiz module, uh, a really nice visual way to ask something that you could ask in a text-based question, uh, but can add variety and um, some visual appeal. Another one here is selecting missing words. Um, we have a drop-down menu with possible choices. You can also do a drag and drop type question. Um, this allows you to scaffold, uh, is a verb I've put up here, to start with those more uh, receptive type questions that are easier for just identifying once you when you first learn a topic, and then later coming back and you can do something like fill in the blank on our, uh, on our question cards here. You can really keep with the learner and um, build the questions so that it's a little more of that desirable difficulty that I talked about at the beginning. The last thing I'd like to mention is randomizing questions in uh, the quiz module. So here we have uh, a unit quiz, I've called it. Um, I'll grab my mouse. And I've added, for example, we've done unit one, unit two, and this is unit three. So unit three, I might ask two questions from unit three. These are some key ideas. But I don't want you as the user or the learner to forget what you learned in unit one and unit two. So I can create a question bank for unit one and pull a random question out of it. You might have 10 questions that you might have already seen in unit one, but it's been a couple of units now. What do you remember? What do you forget? What do you need to work on? And you can do the same thing for uh, unit two. Uh, really making that bit of desirable difficulty uh, and making people retrieve information um, that, that's been sitting for a little while. And just to add a little extra point to it, we can shuffle the questions so that it's not always unit three, unit three, unit one, unit two, but it can be all mixed around. And you have to judge with your learners how far along they are, how much variation they're willing to tolerate, and that can take some experimentation. All right. So to summarize, is I'd like to just point out some of the maybe things that I've um, pointed out implicitly. Uh, we have a decreased time to market with uh, some of these interactions. If you don't have to worry about the styling and you don't have to worry about the programming, you can concentrate on just the interactions themselves, the activities, um, getting that right and then going for it, uh, uploading, creating in the LMS itself and uh, setting it loose. Uh, you can also collaborate with other team members since you're all in the LMS. Everyone can see the question banks. Everyone can see the H5P. So you can actually author something and then say, hey, can you go in and look at this for me? And they can just look at it and make tweaks, uh, offer suggestions, uh, which is a nice, uh, nice to have that backup of not just you looking at it. Um, 
this desirable difficulty that I bring in, building in quizzing as a learning tool, that it's not just take in information, take in information, take in information, but giving the learner a chance, even if it's not for CME, even if it's just between units. Hey, do you remember that thing from a couple modules ago? Test yourself out. And then uh, with, I'll be checking on H5P, um, but definitely with the quizzing module, taking advantage of course stages, uh, the, the grade book, and being able to say which, which questions are working, which ones are not. Is it, do we need to rewrite a question? Has the material changed? Um, and you'll have the, the chance to, to work with that as it goes along. So those are my points on native authoring. Um, are, what questions do y'all have um, in terms of native authoring or otherwise? And we're also kind of late in the day, so if you don't have questions, <laughs> I'm not offended. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you.